Hello, welcome to Quackalope, thank you for being here. Today, we're not only in a brand new studio, we're also starting a brand new series. If you don't watch our vlog, which came out earlier today, titled along the lines of something like, there's no turning back, you, you need to go check that out. We have moved. We're up here in Cleveland, just a few blocks away from Board Game Co. We are filming and producing and getting a brand new studio set up. Hopefully you like it. This is the start. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, with that being said, this is going to be a brand new series where we quickly run through five games we are keeping, five games we're getting rid of because our collections are being merged. We're coming together into one space, and we don't have room on... We have limited calyxes. <sighs> no, no, no. no. Yes. We don't have limited calyxes. We have three calyxes, all of which are full. We have limited floor space. No, no. It's limited calyxes as well. I mean, you just said they're all filled, and we still have games coming. Yeah. We got games today. Okay. So, that being said, we're going to be going through a bunch of games. If there's any you want us to revisit, play, or advocate for, let us know. I'm pretty confident that we're getting rid of some, and we'll talk to you about why, and I'm pretty confident we're 100% keeping some, and again, we'll talk to you about why. We have one calyx that's dedicated to games that are moving on. We have one calyx that's going to be dedicated to our personal permanent collection. And we have one calyx that's focused on coverage, on games that we want to play, on things that are on our radar. Which brings me to this little gem sitting between us. This is a game that I backed a long time ago. I believe it is in the top 100 on BGG. Okay. Keyflower is a well-beloved game that I've never bothered to play. So... Here's the thing. I have a lot of games to play. We probably play 10 new games a week at this point, and yep. we should be playing more. Is this one worth it? I need you all, the audience, to leave a comment down below. Let me know what your experience with, if you have any, of Keyflower. Are you interested in coverage? If we get enough feedback and responses, it'll determine if this is going to be a shelf or sell product. That being said, let's go ahead and start swinging through the titles we have. Do you want to start over here with some good ones? Sure. I will start with the very top. And, and here's the fun thing. They don't, don't know really we, know what is I coming mean, and going. I mean, they can guess. They can guess. I mean, they certainly can. Feel free to leave a guess down below if you'd like. But, yeah, we're going to have to... This is going to be fun. We should mix up the piles in future this is, videos. This is going to be fun. All right. This game is brand spanking new. We just got it at Gen Con. Loon Capital by Devere Games. This is a gem. It was yeah. amazing. It was probably one of my most favorite finds from Gen Con. It's a five out of five for me. Really? Yeah. It, I I really I really like it. I don't know if I've rated it yet. I don't mm. know if I've played it enough. I think you gave uh, it a four-ish. A four-ish, yeah. I want to play it some more. But it's a tiling, tableau building situation that you've got going on where you're competing for various scoring mechanisms and just trying to get the most points from your on Mars station and here's the the reason why it is without a doubt just staying permanently now our biggest critique and board game co's biggest critique when we played with him had to do with the way that the tiles and cards start coming yeah. out onto the table guess what stick them all in a bag shake them all up mix them up it might add a little bit more randomness to the game it doesn't ruin the puzzle at all and as far as i'm concerned unless someone shows me the math it is really, really fun, and it reduces the amount of upkeep you have to do to table it. Yeah, we literally really. just have them all in a bag in here, yeah. and we played like that, and it was wonderful. I am not desorting these tiles. This game is a blast either way. Also, it fits into a tiny box. Tiny yeah. boxes that give you amazing experiences are staying. It's part of the permanent collection. It has to be. It's just that way. One of the games I am getting rid of is going to be this lovely little game called My Little Scythe. Was this, this one on your Barnes & Nobles list? Or no, no, no. Or almost made it? Uh, no, I don't think it almost made it at all. I, I think My Little Scythe is actually quite a lovely game. Now, the lid is all splattered because I have miniatures in here that aren't quite sorted, right? My Little Scythe is actually quite a lovely game. It is It replicates the feeling of Scythe very, very well. You're running around a board doing your very best to build up resources, using some special tiles and actions and abilities to gather pies, get into pie fights with other players and achieve a few specific victory conditions. And I really enjoyed it when I played it. I described it, I believe, as a little brother to Scythe, right? A more accessible, uh, decent way to experience that heavier game in a small box. However, after about four plays of this, it hasn't seen the table since, and Scythe has. And I don't need both of them on my shelf. Okay. I just don't. With my gaming group, I don't need my little Scythe in order to have that experience, because if I want that experience... I'm going to go ahead and table Scythe. So this one, it's just taking up room. It's not getting played. 
I still think it's a very, very solid game. A solid, like, high three. Uh, it's just not for me and my gaming group. Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. All right, so as some of you know, have we announced that we were on official? We've loosely talked about it. There's been yeah. no videos on the main okay. channel yet. There's going to start soon. We actually have, I think, a three or four over on Patreon. Patreon. Yep, and we have like three more that still need to get edited. Yep. It's been a crazy month. This one is definitely a keeper because we are in the middle of the campaign. I believe this is our personal copy, copy with our minis and all yep. of our stats inside. And I'm really excited to have a permanent studio and tables that we can leave out games and just go back to and just play round and round yeah. and round again and again and again. This is going to make, this studio space is going to make it so much easier for us to table campaign games together. We're going to be able to, you know, hop off a day, basically a Monday, and say, hey, all day today we're playing Bloomhaven or we're playing Kingdom Death, etc., etc." And et launching off of Gloomhaven, I want to go to the main one. The big box. And then Frosthaven as well. There's so much in this, there's so much by these guys that I cannot wait. Yeah, and she is the type of person that will hold on to like the artboard and stuff after we're done playing. Oh yeah, our I first campaign know. ever is going to get framed in a shadow box with our minis that we are going to paint. I don't know that I ever see myself replaying Jaws of the Lion, so I don't see if I, I don't, it is staying yeah. for the time being until it gets permanently enclosed in a shadow box, but it really is a lovely, lovely adventure. Uh, okay, what do we have now? Ishtar. Ishtar is going to be a game that I picked up a while ago, early, early on in the channel. Uh, it's from Yellow, who put out some games that I absolutely love, Bunny Kingdom being one of my favorites. And this is going to be Ishtar Babel or, or Gardens of Babylon, which is all about tile laying in specific regions in order to collect gems and resources, connect different areas with water, plant trees, and watch them grow. And I am fascinated by the cover of it. I picked it up on the cover alone. I love the artwork, the style, the design. And the gameplay, honestly, is very solid. But in my collection, this tile laying game is about a three. It's maybe a 3.2 out of five. It's very solid. It's a good game. I understand why people like it. I'd be happy to recommend it or hand it off to people. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to send it to another home. It's just not getting to the table. And I don't see our group playing it. Yeah. Maybe you and I will give it one more play before it leaves so you can experience it because it is nice and it's good tile I'd like laying. to do that. I think um, Alex has gotten called his recently he as has, well. He has also called his recently as well. Our game group just, it's not one that we think, or I think, I'm going to see on the table very often. I've always enjoyed it. I've never really sought it out. So, off to the side. Next. Humblewood. This would not be an appropriate list if we didn't have the introduction of at least one RPG, specifically the RPG that I have been desperately looking for a partner <laughs> to play it with for the longest freaking time. I have all the minis. I have this core box. I love RPG games. I have not been able to run a DM, you know, an RPG session for a long time because, well, the world shut down. Gaming groups have been fluctuated. We play so many games. It's hard to have a consistent group coming back and back. We are going to set up and start doing a weekly couples RPG where she's the player and I'm the DM. Yeah. This one, I've seen the artwork. We saw it at Gen Con as well. They had a really cute stuffed animal that I kind of wanted to get. But the artwork is so attractive. So and I can't wait because I don't necessarily have the creativity to do the DM part of it. But I enjoy exploring. I enjoy making decisions. I enjoy asking questions. And so I'm really curious how this is going to be at a couple's game. Yeah. I can't I'm, wait to dive I'm, in. I'm fascinated. But this is, hands down, the first RPG slated into our... RPG wall section of the board game Calyx. Next, Game of Thrones, the board game. Okay. I just started watching this TV mm -hmm. show. I know I am very, very, very behind the times. I have played Game of Thrones, the board game, even with the Dragon expansion. I, I've, I've played it with. I played it with both versions. Uh, it's three to six players. Honestly, higher player count is going to be best player count. I think we played it five and six, and then with the the Dragon expansion. I think we played full player count at least once. This game's incredible. It's, it's an amazing experience. It really does replicate the experience of Game of Thrones very well. Uh, and that being said, that means that it is unbalanced and not quite even, and you're able to lose because, you know, you just start off at the Starks. And, and if you win as the Starks, it's incredible. But if, if, you, if you don't, it's because, well, the North is cruel, and the opportunity to make it down into the South and actually take over the Keeper or any of that is just so... It's just so hard. If you love Game of Thrones, like I did at one point, this game really does give you a pretty incredible experience, especially if you have a higher player group 
This is also a game, though, that I have no desire to teach. I no longer have a desire to play with people. There's just better games out there for me when I'm talking about that five, six player group. And this one is not one that I personally will pull out off the shelf. If other people are recommending it, awesome. I'd probably sit down and join, but but it doesn't need to be in my collection at all. I think this one's probably a four out of five for me. Really? I would honestly give this one a really solid score, but it's a low four and it's, it's one of those that just would never be played. It's similar to TI in some ways, an epic, amazing experience yeah. that is so hard to table. So Game of Thrones, the board game, maybe, maybe this is another one we try to play before we let I'd it like go. I'd like to, now that I know some of the story, um, backstory behind it. it but I, I'd, be, I'd be curious. I'd be curious and hesitant. We'll see if this is one that even us are able to get to the table before, right. uh, before it's too late. So I'll slide that down to the side. And you're grabbing Jan Biggis's all-time favorite it's, game. It's his number one of all time. We we can't we can't get rid of it. And this is going to be the new version uh, from uh, Edgar Spiel. Uh, this is just an incredible rondelle worker placement where the board develops as you're moving through it. You haven't played this one yet. No, and we Western talked... is really not my thing. So I'm curious because so many people rate it so yeah. highly. We picked this one up at. Oh my goodness, I'm Origins. mixing up Origins? Origins no, or Gen, Gen Con. Con. We got, we got, we got Gen a Gen Con. Con. I'm mixing up the two conventions. Not that they were two weeks apart. So, but yeah, I'm curious because Bantam West I, I like. And Good. there was um, Zombie Side. Um, Zombie Side, there's Western. a Western yep. one. Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive that I really enjoyed playing on TTS. So I am curious. I'm slowly going into the Western theme. And maybe I do end up liking this. I really, really love Great Western Trail. Even if Shira didn't like it, this would not be one that would be even considered for the chopping <laughs> block at the moment. It's a five out of five for me. Now, I haven't played the second edition. I know there's been some changes, but I'm, I'm curious to dig in and see what those are. I don't personally own a copy of the original. Jan always was the person that had that copy. And so we're going to play the second edition here. There's a chance maybe we go back to the original if we don't like the changes that have been made on the board. But my assumption and my core kind of intrinsic thought is... There is always going to be a copy of Great Western Trail here on our shelf, and I really, really think you're going to love it when we actually get to play it. I'm curious. I can't wait. So, oh, you can change your hat. You can choose a hat. Already selling her. Okay. Blood. Swinging over. Bloodborne, <sighs> the board game. This is this is unopened as well because this is my personal Kickstarter pledge of it. I actually gave Devin the extras already, okay. so I've already started getting rid of this. Bloodborne's such, Bloodborne's such a, a hard spot for me because the game, I think, does the video game justice. It really does replicate. So Bloodborne is going to be this massive Again, another video, video game, game I don't know about. Where you're grinding and fighting and destroying and doing your very best to like learn the intricacies of the map and run past creatures and slaughter them. And, and it does that very well. But just like the video game, after about three hours in it, I got frustrated and quit. And mm -hmm. I have played Bloodborne on TTS a few times. We even have recorded gameplays here on the channel. Uh, and everything I said there, I still stand by. I think it does the video game justice. I think it's a remarkable IP. I think it, I think it uh, encrypted or brought the IP onto the tabletop scene very, very well. Again, though, this is not a game that I am going to play. I have so many different campaign games that are bigger, more accessible. So this is also a campaign. It is a campaign, yeah. And and there, are there any one... One stop. There like, are there are some like more mm -hmm. accessible like one shot type of things, but primarily you're going to be playing this in a sequence of campaigns. I think each story arc is like three or four chapters. Okay. Uh, there's a reason to like this. There is. It, it just it just doesn't need to be here on my shelf again. You're not really going to be into the theme style art of it and the way that it is. The way that it is grindy and replicates the video game is not a thing that I enjoyed in the video gotcha. game, and it's not a thing that I enjoy in the board game. So, off to the side. We're getting rid of it. Okay, Claustrophobia. So, little spoiler alert, I actually do have the newest version of this as well, still completely in shrink, because I loved this when I first got into the hobby space, and I bought the newest version as sort of wanting to play an homage to I played this maybe four or five times when I first got into the board game world. Claustrophobia is going to be a one verse one or a one verse many dungeon crawl experience okay. where someone is throwing evil minions 
It's not one verse many, actually. This is a one verse one. I think the new one might have modular players. Either way, this is going to be a one verse one where you're, you're cr uh, creeping through tunnels and they're throwing enemies in your way, closing off paths, and you're doing your very best to escape and fight your way to the exit or fight your way to the victory condition before the darkness closes in on you. It feels like the title describes, right? Yeah. An overwhelming, overbearing sense of being squeezed to death. Uh, and it's really cool. It's also very hard to table. It also has a newer version already out. And it's one of those games that I bought when I first got into the hobby that I really liked. And then I found other things. Are you keeping I... the newer version? That's the big question. No? At the moment, I'm considering it. Okay. However, I'm not honestly sure. I haven't opened it and I haven't tabled it since the newest version yeah. came out. And so it's just not seeing the table. Again, maybe we'll give this one a swing. Maybe I we'll give it another chance. Most of the chance. ones that we are calling in this video, I actually want to give a swing just before they because go. Because you've never played because them. Because I've never played yeah. them. The, so the truth is that he has the he has the majority have the of the... Collection. You have the biggest collection between the two of us. I have very, very few because I've always played with friends and they've had the collections. So we are going through your collection essentially yep. and deciding what we want to keep in our joint collection. So that's why I haven't played most of them. But some of them I'm interested in. And if they're in the top 100, that's actually a series that yeah. we're going to be trying to do. Yeah, and so there's a chance we'll also table this one. Honestly, part of it's going to depend on the comments here. If there's people yeah. that are really excited to see it, I don't mind going through and spending the extra time if there's enough demand to do a review or a gameplay or extra coverage. But if there isn't that audience attention and it's not a game I'm playing and it's not one I think you'll like, we have so many other yeah. good games to play. All right. Last but not least... Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars. Careful. Terraforming Mars. Oh, there's it's there's wooden organize, organizers in here, and I just heard all the cubes. Terraforming Mars is actually going to be a game that is actually from my collection, yeah. and this is not going anywhere. This is the very yeah. first game that I ever asked for, that I ever purchased, and it's. It's in my top 10 for sure. It's grandfathered uh, into yes. my collection. Apparently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not going anywhere. You cannot. And I actually want to get all the deluxifications. They're really cool tiles that you can get. I, I love this game. I love the drafting. I love the meanness that can happen between the players. I love the interactions. I love what you're doing and building Mars and making it livable. I, I can't speak enough. This is a five out of five, yeah. hands down. It's a five out of five, and I just don't know where it fits in my top ten. I haven't organized that yet. Ooh, at least you played it finally. <sighs> at least you gave it the time of day. It's a four out of five for me. <laughs> Although this weekend and this next week, we are planning on bringing some coverage of this to the channel. Finally, I'm down for all my <laughs> so, stuff. False. Either way, thank you for watching. Let's slide that off to the side. Let us know your thoughts. Any games here you would have like gotten rid of that you would have owned? Are our scores around where yours are? This is going to be a weekly series for maybe the foreseeable future. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we have an influx of games. We already have a collection of hundreds of games yeah. in hand. Uh, and maybe it won't always be five and five. Maybe it'll be a little bit tighter. Like we'll have a week where we're not really getting rid of anything. Yeah. But that conversation is still going to be important. So... Thank you for being here. Hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment letting us know uh, any of these titles, including, of course, uh, Keyflower here. Is this one worth playing, worth us giving the time of day, or should it go ahead and be on the chopping block with the other set? Uh, we'll sort of fight about that. Either way, whatever the case, whatever you do... Remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you, we'll next, see you next time. time. Thank Thanks. You.